Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of At The Bar. I'm your host, Brad Marshall. Where this is an opportunity for us to just have conversations about health, fitness, and mindset. And today I am joined by Daniel Montero. So Daniel, thanks so much for taking some time to spend with us today. Thank you, Brad. Uh, I'm honored to be here and uh, have this uh, awesome conversations with you. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to diving into a lot of different content, uh, learning a little bit more about you. And so with that being said, always love to let our guests just tell us a little bit more about themselves. So share as much or as little as you'd like, but just give folks and the listeners out there, who's Daniel Montero? All right. Um, so I uh, own, uh, my wife and I own First and Fly Athletics. Um, but uh, basically, uh, let's start from, I guess, from the beginning. Uh, soccer um, has been a part of my life since I was four. I think I started playing four. Um, and I was heavily involved in uh, playing soccer, uh, traveled a lot, um, played in high school. Um, I think we won, we won three state, three state champs. Yeah, three. Um, then played uh, collegiate um, for a year. I had broken my foot, so I only played a year, and it was just giving me a lot of issues. Um, and then I went to – I transferred to UNCW. So I played one year in college at a D2 school, uh, transferred to UNCW. Um, and from there, you know, health, fitness, you know, playing some type of sport was always part of my life. Um, I knew going into college, I wanted to be, do something with um, sports. So it actually was going to be, um, I wanted to do um, athletic, uh, be an athletic trainer at first. Um, so it, I took, uh, I went through exercise science as my, uh, you know, my program. And then it kind of fell into, uh, I wanted to do physical therapy. Didn't work out. Um and I found CrossFit, and then that's kind of how it all happened. Um, you know, started working at a gym there, and then um, left to a different gym and worked there for three years. And then, you know, this is where we're kind of are right now. Uh, three years later, now we have this gym here in Wendell. So yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of yeah. things I'm excited to to dive into there because your story, I think, is something a lot of us can relate to. Involved in yeah. athletics or sports of some kind. We get out of that sport. We start to figure out what do we want to do? How do we stay fit? And, you know, for you, you found CrossFit. So I'm curious a little bit to hear a little bit more about the soccer side. Is that something that you just took a liking to and a passion for yourself, something your parents sort of influenced and pushed you towards? Or how did it come about that you got into soccer and took that as far as you could? Um, man, both my parents are not athletic. So it had nothing to do with, with them. Um, and, um, I basically, from when I was little, apparently just always liked playing outside, playing with a ball of some sort. And, um, they, you know, my dad, my dad, my family's obviously Hispanic. So soccer is, is part of their culture. So, um, it threw me into playing uh, soccer and boom, I mean, I picked it up. It's, you know, natural just played and, uh, played actually two years up from uh, when I was little the entire time uh, just because uh, I guess I was blessed with, you know, the skills of playing some, some soccer. So, um, yeah. And then I just stuck with it. And then I traveled a lot doing that competitively. And, um, yeah. You know? And so what, uh, what positions did you get a chance to play? Did you stick with the same position or did that change over time? It kind of um, – Majority of the time, I always played up top because I'm, I'm fast and quick. Um, and I was really good at just, like, finishing. Um, but then in um, – at one point during club, I played a little bit in the middle, uh, you know, midfield. And then my first year of uh, high school, my coach actually put me as a defender, which was mm. very different. Um I don't know why. I don't know if because I'm I'm smaller, so I don't know. You don't think like a small guy would be playing in the back, you know? But I played that, and then they were like, "No, let's just keep you up front." So that's where I ended up. Nice. So the score, uh, goal score, and pushing the pace a little bit, which is fun. 
how did you get into or how did you potentially like train or prepare as a soccer athlete? Because it's interesting. I was actually just having this conversation with a, a friend the other day of how the sports we play and when we're young sort of dictate the type of movement. Like I never did a true workout until I was probably in high school. Like, you know, we did PE growing up and you did, you learned about push-ups and running and yeah. tests but we never did anything formal. So maybe kind of riff off of that, of how did, you know, the training start for you or what did it look like? When did you start to formally train as a young athlete and how did that sort of shape the way that you developed? When you say how I trained as a young, are you talking about more of like that soccer side of things? Or yeah. Like yeah. How did you get ready the... for the sport? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I got you now. Um, I think uh, so. I was just lucky because the way that our coaches had everything set up was either somebody came in and did a bunch of agility stuff with mm us. Um, and I think it depended on what, where we were in life. Like when I went to college, then they started incorporating a lot more of the heavy lifting stuff okay. um, or uh, explosive stuff. But in high school, um, honestly, I felt like we were doing a lot more running than anything um because as long as we could run and keep um our like 90 percent through the whole game versus like you know staying 90 percent for the first half and then you're dead in the second half and only playing at 50 that was a really big thing for us in high school is like we can last for 90 percent the whole time we most likely are going to win um so we were really conditioned i think in high school more towards that high you know, cardio aspect. And then as I got older, you could see like, well, the, you know, everybody's going to be a lot stronger in college, um, a lot bigger, you know, um, a lot more skilled because, you know, you separate from high school, you know, to college. And then that's where, you know, like the, the lifting um, got more involved. So I think in college is where like, I actually went to, it's sad, it's sad, like in college, that's when I first went to do my first workout was a freshman in college, like in high school, like we had weightlifting classes, but I mean, if you took it seriously respect, because in high school, that was not something that I really, I wish I did. Yeah. I wish I knew. Yeah. You know, because now like with CrossFit and lifting and, and doing all the training with that, I, uh, had done some indoor soccer or some, you know, some leagues and man, it played a huge role. Like I just felt like I was way stronger, um, was able to battle, you know, somebody that was way bigger with, you know, me, you know, you know, shoulder, shoulder running against ball or hitting, you know, not hitting, but you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. in indoor, it's kind of, I think it's a little more physical, but, but yeah. So I think it's so fascinating, you know, that perspective, because I, I would agree, I'm in the same boat, uh, you know, didn't get formal workouts to later in life. And we see what some of these teenagers are capable of who get on a sort of formal training plan early on in their, you know, 11, 12 years old, and at 17, 18, they're already really pushing the boundary of what we think is possible. And so I think it, it just speaks to the idea that, it's okay to get some more formalized training at a younger age and how much more beneficial that can be for us, maybe in a sport that we love playing or maybe just being healthy in our lives as we transition through. So it's, uh, it's cool to hear that perspective from you of, you know, we are influenced at a young age on what we get into, whether it's we're just running or, hey, we're doing push-ups or whatever it might be and how mm -hmm. that transitions. So I'd love to hear as you worked through then high school and then college and then transitioned out of soccer, what did fitness look like for you no longer as a athlete that was competing formally? Oh, it's, a, it's funny you asked that question. I, so believe it or not, like after I finished college and that was, that was my motivation, you know, to stay healthy but I gosh it at that time I felt like I was still blinded because I like I actually I stopped soccer right 
Um, so I was in my sophomore year of college and that's when I decided to no longer play anymore. Um, and so all of my, you know, fitness or running and, you know, moving side to side or this and that stopped. Um, believe it or not, I didn't actually continue doing anything physical, um, in the gym or outside the gym at that intensity anymore. So there is a one part of my life where it kind of dropped off. Mm -hmm. Um, and at that time, it was a time where I was enjoying college more than I probably should have, which everybody goes through, mm -hmm. um, especially being at Wilmington and the beach. Um, you know, you just get kind of caught up. So um, I played a little bit like here and there, but I remember thinking to myself like, man, I'm like, I've like lost um you know i'm slower mm -hmm. um i'm a smaller guy so i've never been big so i was like getting bigger um than what i'm was used to and i was you know i was like wow like i need to do something so i actually ended up trying to just play more soccer because that's what i just knew you know it was just to go play more um it still hadn't the gym still hadn't hit yet so I was still um like okay well I'm just gonna go play more soccer so I ended up playing um intramural stuff with friends um and that was fun like you know um more club stuff uh, involving soccer and stuff like that um so I did that for a while and then you know that's kind of, again, that's still fitness hadn't come in yet, but I figured you're going to ask that question of how I got into it. So I'll explain it, I guess, when it comes up, but, but yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, the natural ebb and flow. A lot of us take is we're get into some form of working out because of either a sport we're in, or we want to get better at something. And then we transition out of that sport and we're a little bit lost is what I, I way, yeah. the way I describe it of, don't really know what to do or why to do it. Everything was geared towards this specific activity. And as our life goes through, we just sort of hit this ebb and flow of periods of, Hey, I want to be in shape. And then eh, I'm, I'm not as, uh, not as worried about it at this point in time. So for right. you, it sounds like that was sort of those college years. And mm -hmm. so after college, it sounds like did the intramural thing, try to stay in shape in that way. And then at some point in time along the way, we found the gym, CrossFit, whatever it might be. So what was that process like for you? Um, so let's see. I ended up trying to do some um, – right before CrossFit, I was doing the dumb, like, uh, insanity stuff. Done, been there, done that. Yeah, I think we all have. I think we all did it because it's, it's, it's there. It's not – easy i wouldn't say it's easy but it was just there so it was easy to go do because it's mm -hmm. on your laptop or computer or whatever you put it on um so i did that and i did that like a couple of times and then i was like okay this is boring you know so then i think from there i then got into the gym and i had some massive uh bodybuilding roommates mm -hmm. and then they took me so um, they kind of showed me a little bit of, you know, the, you know, that culture life of the old school, like bodybuilding style stuff. So I did that and I still got bored And it. For me, it makes sense because soccer is such a high paced uh, game and bodybuilding is, a, you know, you're doing your reps, you're sitting or you're standing or whatever you're doing and you're resting and then you're hitting another set or whatever. And I just, I got bored, um, very bored. So I was like, I can't do this. Like, this is, this is just too boring. Um, so then um, my last year of college, I actually got heartbroken. Um, I was dating a girl for all of college. And I actually thought I was going to marry this girl. And um so she broke up with me the summer before my senior year and my senior year was uh, awesome. I only had to take, um, I think two classes. I had a half semester left. So this is going to be my last like hoorah before I graduate and, you know, move on to, to life. And um, so that happened. And 
I mean, you get heartbroken. It's, you know, you're, there's you're plenty past. of, uh, there's plenty of funny memes. If you follow any gym pages on yeah. social media about how channeling that heartbreak into the gym is sometimes the best thing that you can do. And it, and exactly, you just said it, it literally was the best thing that ever happened to me. Not that our relationship wasn't great with Jade for a very long time. It was great. Um, and then when we broke up, it was devastating almost, you know? So I was like, what am I going to do? Cause this girl is like my best friend, you know, at the time. So then I'm like, what am I going to do? So then I'm like, I'm just going to go start CrossFit finally. Um, uh, cause I had heard about it, but at the time, um, you know, CrossFit's 135 a month a plus, um, senior year of college it's not like i'm racking in a ton of money to you know so i actually ended up and you know bless my my dad but he actually ended up helping me get that going um so he actually covered that cost for me um because i was like dude like i need something because this i'm just gonna go downhill mm -hmm. and um i started and as you know first day I started and I was hooked I mean the definition of your first day across it you get hooked and I loved it I stuck with it and I excelled at it very quickly so when that happened um I blocked all of the past stuff out of my life and you know kind of blossomed yeah in a way so it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Um, you know, clearly with now where I am now, like, you know, running this own, my own place, like it was meant to be that we weren't, you know, that she should have broke up with me and boom, this happened. So I was blessed that, you know, it happened. I hated it happened because we're, you know, best friends, but I was glad it happened. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it happened um, with getting into CrossFit. Yeah. Something that I noticed a thread that runs along your story, and I think a lot of people can relate to it, is the role that our social circle or the community that we have plays in it. You know, you were involved in soccer and you're doing your workouts with your teammates and then found Insanity, which is sort of like the solo project, but there's still people on the TV screen and you feel like you're trying to connect to the beach body world and then having friends who took you to the bodybuilding world. And then, you know, eventually finding CrossFit, which has a lot of community tied in with community. that. Oh, yeah. And, you know, being an owner of a gym, I'm just curious if you would be able to elaborate on that a little bit of what role you feel like or you've seen this idea of community or having social support for people's health and fitness journeys and how pivotal that can be. I think that if... CrossFit didn't have the community aspect that every CrossFit gym should have, then CrossFit wouldn't be what it is today. I think that that's the reason that it is the reason why it saved me. Not that I was like going like a terrible down, you know, world, but like I was not in the right place still. Um, and the community that I had at my first gym was the best thing in the world. And it literally sucked me in so quick that I just thought I had like a brand new family. So like with the gym here, like that is the number one thing that we always talk about is that at this gym, we try to make it a family. We try to make it a community. It's literally ran by my wife, uh, my dad and my mom and I, like we're all invested in this together. And I think a lot of people say like, that's why we picked you guys is because you're, you're, you're a family that's just, you know, trying to run a, a fun gym, you know, and um, they love that part about, you know, first in flight. So we try to make that. I know that a lot of gyms obviously do that. I know that shoe flies like that. I know that street, you know, tries to make it a community base. And I know that you're like that too. So I think that's why everybody starts, um, you know, with whatever they're doing in fitness, but I think CrossFit definitely has that community aspect uh, behind it. So, yeah. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I, I think that's my personal opinion too, is community or social support in some way, shape or form 
is probably the most or the biggest influencer on somebody staying consistent in anything, a running club, getting on the Peloton, getting into a CrossFit gym. If we're looking at movement from a more holistic perspective here, that community is what everybody's trying to figure out and find of ways to build that. Um, so I'm curious, so your gym being family owned, mom and dad and wife involved in it, is there anything that you do specifically or tactics maybe we can learn from of how do you build community or how do you put that first? I know you've got rules or gym rules on the board there that highlight some of those factors, but as you think about building community, how do you feel like you've seen that or some of the best ways that you've been able to do that as a gym owner? Just the, uh, we just try to do a lot of, um, events that's you know here at the gym um that are only for the gym um whether it's as simple as like a halloween party or Mm -hmm. a christmas party or in-house competition um or we're trying to do a bring your friend for the month type thing um to show that like you know we want you to be able to bring your friends because it's something that you obviously love so you know bring them and see if they enjoy it with you kind of thing Um, So we just try to do as much, um, you know, community things at the gym as possible, you know, barbecues, stuff like that, Um, fundraisers. Uh, Another example of something that we did, um, we have a um, CrossFit mom here that she just um, had a baby born, um, but her baby was born three months early. Mm. So she is currently at the hospital for the next three months um, because obviously she um, came a little bit too soon. Mm -hmm. So um, as a gym, we did on 9-11, we did also a fundraiser for her um, to help out, um, you know, the family that is now going to have to revolve their life around the hospital for the next three months, which is, you know, thinking about financially, like is going to be astronomical. So, you know, right there, our community, we told her like your, your first and five families is going to be behind you this entire way. So like stuff like that, you know, goes around. And I think that's why people, um, you know, I, I know other gyms do this, but you know, that's why I think, uh, it makes us special here. Um, you know, I saw, you know, the mom, uh, I'd actually had her baby shower and, she just hugged and, and cried, you know, and like just amazed that we ran a fundraiser for her like that, you know? So, yeah. so yeah. Those are the, I think those are the stories that we love to see. We love to interact with. And we see it, like you said, all over the community, which is amazing that there is this one tie that kind of binds all these different communities together. And at the same time, doing things very proactively, and being intentional with the ways that you're building community, because if we know that's such a powerful force to get people to consistently come back and improve their own health and fitness journey, it makes sense why you'd want to focus on that. So I uh, love mm-hmm. to hear that from your gym. I'm curious, uh, going back to the, the, your own personal journey here, found CrossFit, you said you loved it, got a chance to coach, got a chance to now own and operate your own gym. I would love to hear what was that process like of going from coach to making the decision of, I would love to own or operate my own space. And what was that journey like to try and help people on a bigger scale other than coaching? So believe it or not, in my first week of CrossFit, I actually told myself, I wish I had told somebody this out loud, but I actually told myself that one day, I'm going to open my own place. Mm. I loved it that much in a week that I literally was like, this is going to be what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started coaching, um, as a secondary coach, I wasn't like a lead coach or anything at my first gym, but you know, um, started doing that for a while. Um, and then, uh, left, uh, my first gym to go to a different gym to have a, a little bit bigger of an opportunity with the, the gym side of things. Um, you know, at a small town in, in Wendell. Um, so I coached there for 
three and a half years around there. Um, I became the head coach at that different gym uh, within the three years. Um, obviously, wanted to per keep pursuing that, you know, the coaching life, you know, more hours, you know, strictly do that. Um, try to work on, you know, the programming side of things. Um, you know, trying to build the clientele as, as a whole. Um, you know, and then I, you know, at a certain point, it just, it got to the point where um, I was trying to invest where I was and it wasn't given back the same way, which happens, I know, to a lot of coaches out there where they're, you know, kind of in this spot and they're doing this, but it's not the same way, you know, back. So it, it just got to the point where, like, I needed to move on and, um, you know, I ended up opening my own facility and a lot of people knew that I invested, you know, three years of my life at that current place. So I truly was invested in, in my time there and I cared about health and fitness and, and the people that I was working with and all the relationships that I built. So, yeah, I ended up, um, you know, moving um, and opening up this own gym. So I did have a lot of, of people follow, um, you know. And it was great um, that we were able to kind of start with the foundation of people that supported me throughout, you know, the, the three years that I had built. Um, so once I transi transitioned to it, it was, I mean, obviously a lot more roles came into play. Um, <laughs> you know, you're doing all the, the financial side of it, the billing side of it, and now you're having to kind of do the 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 boss side of it you know because everybody sees me as the coach you know where I don't have to really worry about handling kind of the stuff that may happen on you know the boss role mm -hmm. so now I'm now this guy you know and um so that was that was challenging because you want to play the, the the nice role the whole time and sometimes you're like no, you know, like, this is how it is. Um, this is how we're running things. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So that was, that was challenging for me. Um, and I didn't get more comfortable with it I, until I was more settled into it. Um, yeah. And then probably the most stressful thing is, um, was definitely the, the, you know, the bank stuff of here, I'm about to pull a loan for a gym um am I gonna make it or am I not gonna make it but in the end I mean I knew I would but it was more of it's a lot of money being put into yeah. you know your your future and um you know so that was probably the most stressful thing yeah. um you know in transitioning it was like now I have to figure out you know how am I going to get all this paid for kind of thing? So, so yeah. Um, but yeah. I love hearing that story of the passion and the desire to just get to be as good of a coach as you can continually pouring into the gym and then making that, that tough and big decision to open your own space. There's a thread I want to pull on on there. And, and we talk a lot about health and fitness on here, but we also, I love diving into the mindset side. And so there were some very tough decisions that you had to make along that journey. The decision to leave the current space, start your own space, the decision to take out a loan, make a big bet on yourself uh, that you can be successful. Talk us through a little bit about what that was like from a mindset perspective or what allowed you or gave you the confidence to make some of those hard, big decisions and feel like you were going to be capable of being successful on the other side of them. So when I was at um, the other facility, obviously my role was building as much relationships and bringing in as much people as I could, but I couldn't obviously make all of those call, all the calls that I wanted. So I was restricted on how to operate. Um, so I knew that once I could leave and do it my way, 
Um, I knew that once I left and yes, yeah, starting with a foundation, which was, which was great. Um, it's like a kickstart. Like, you know, we were blessed to have so many people kind of follow us, but I knew that if we could operate the way that I wanted to, then we can kind of build it differently than how it was previously with kind of the role, the, that side where I was saying, like, I didn't have those, um, where I couldn't make those rules. Um, so I knew with us doing it, you know, the way that we wanted, it would help us take off a lot more, you know, than where I previous, previously was. Um, so I would just say like, that helped me with my mindset on trying to like, being able to ex expand a lot more where I was, I, we were always stuck at a number of like 75 people, mm -hmm. you know, and we could get, never get past that, but there's just so many things that I wanted to change, you know? So, um, I knew that I knew as soon as I, we decided to pull the trigger on, on making the move, um, and with the support that I had, that was the biggest thing. The support that I had was probably the reason why I pulled the trigger on, on doing it. The other crazy thing that also kind of like fell in line with everything was when we were trying to look for a building, um, my buddy who um, actually kind of is an investor in, in, in this gym, he's kind of like a silent partner. Um, he actually found this building that we're in. And I had a, um, a broker that was trying to look for buildings and stuff like that. And this building wasn't listed, I think, on the market or something. I, I don't remember what it was. But we called the landlord of this building, and when we got him on the phone, um, he asked us what we wanted it for, and we said we wanted to make it a uh, fitness facility, you know, mainly CrossFit. Um, we wanted to add in some other programs, you know, Allison does the boot camp side of, uh, of it, um, you know, and so on. And the, the landlord responded, he was like, well, perfect, because this building is only meant for a gym. <laughs> and I'm in a small town, Wendell, you know, and to hear that was odd because there's um, a Globo type gym already in town and then there's a CrossFit gym already established. So for them, for him to say that he wants it to be a gym, I was kind of like, uh, wow, okay it made it feel like it was meant to be like, God kind of put this, put me in this path. Mm -hmm. And uh, the guy that actually is the landlord of this building, he's also the landlord of 12 state CrossFit. So it's like, it was just kind of crazy. Um, mm -hmm. With that being added, he was like, let's start signing documents. It literally all happened within a week. And that was it. It was just like, it just kind of like fell into place. Um, so that was another reason, like if we didn't have, like, if that didn't happen, I don't know how much longer it would have taken mm -hmm. or if it would have happened the way that it did. But I just felt like when that happened, I was like, it's meant to be that we just open here and do it the way that, you know, we want to. Um, so, yeah. Some things that you said there that I want to highlight, because I think it's really unique and helps all of us learn from it is this idea of confidence and confidence really comes from what we say to ourselves in those moments and reflecting on the tough decisions that you had, you had a lot of confidence that you were going to be able to be successful. Part of that was you had support in a community, which is one way that we can build confidence as others around us can help to support us. Uh, probably done some difficult, challenging things before. So that definitely is something that we can rely on in those moments. And then you know, there's also just sometimes things fall into place, like you said, and mm -hmm. having that uh, work towards our advantage just continually builds that confidence. So whether it's making a tough decision about what to do with your work or employment or start that fitness journey or continue along or competition, regardless of whatever the situation is, these are some really unique things we can pull if we're interested in improving our own confidence to make those tough decisions. So I really appreciate that story and how some of those tie in. Along with that, I'm curious to hear, so now having owned your own space, what are some of your favorite 
pieces about being an owner? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, the flexibility has, has been nice. Um, you know, making our own, I would say like in the beginning when we first opened, um, I, I was probably running all of the classes. Mm -hmm. um, actually, yeah, yeah, it was. Um, that was tough, um, but still had flexibility. Um, so the flexibility part has, it was, is definitely one of the best parts. Um, I would then say, like I, I mentioned earlier, is being able to you know, either have the, the final call or making the decisions um, on how you want it to you know, be ran has been huge. Um, you know, obviously we have like a, a team that everybody has their opinions. Um, but, you know, in the end, Ali and I together kind of make the final decision on, on what happens. Um, so that's also, you know, one of the, the, the coolest parts. Um, I would then say, um, I would say those two are probably, you know, the, the two top ones, I guess, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. as, as being owner, obviously there's the, the, the other side of all the other stuff, but that doesn't, you know, um, yeah, I think those two, to me, you know, the flexibility and, and having the final call and, and stuff like that, um, in the way that we want to build the, you know, the gym and the family, um, is, is probably the, you know, thing we enjoy the most. Um, yeah, that, this idea of autonomy, our ability to have a say in whatever our decisions, behaviors, et cetera, are, how powerful that can be as a motivator intrinsically. So to help us continue moving forward. And it sounds like as an owner, some of that intrinsic motivation or autonomy definitely shows through uh, in your ability to want to grow and continue investing in the gym, which is pretty cool. Right. Uh, curious to come back to your fitness journey if we're going, you know, bring this thing all the way around. So looking at the journey that you've been on so far from soccer to uh, insanity to bodybuilding, now CrossFit, but even within CrossFit, I know like most folks, our goals and things we're working towards changes over time. Uh, I'm just curious to hear of what are some of the things that come to mind for you when you think about current goals or current aspirations that you're working towards within your health and fitness journey? So currently, I would say um, to live a long, healthy, and pain-free life. Mm. I think a lot of us, um, when we first start cross, or probably everybody, when they first, when, we, when you first start, obviously you just want to climb this ladder of goals. Mm -hmm. And that, that's how it should be. And it, it, it always is going to be that way. Um, with me, like, starting CrossFit, um, hitting these goals, um, whether it's for me, a smaller guy, my thing was to get stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so I've now, I think I'm, I'm on my eighth year of CrossFit. Um, you know, did the whole open thing we've done, we've competed, you know, done, did all that. But I think what a lot of people struggle with is, is, you know, when you're, if you are a high competitive athlete, that's totally fine. If you're competing local comps or you're doing whatever, just you have to know that there is 1% of people that go to the games. And when you realize that you're not that 1%, I hope that you shift your training to just move well and pain-free. And that's exactly where I am. And when I realized that funny story, I literally 
was doing a workout and it was with um, cleans, 225 cleans. I normally don't have a problem with 225 cleans. I love cleans. And I got destroyed by this workout. Mm. And I called Allison and literally said, I'm ready to have a child. Literally. That's what happened. And Allison was like, okay, so <laughs> let's do this. And literally two months later, it happened. And I'm telling you that because it hit me finally that I was like, I don't need to be lifting as much as I used to be lifting. I'm 30 years old. That's young. Yes. But I'm not going to the games. You know, I'm not going to regionals. So all I want to do is be able to move well, show my members how to move correctly during all the movements that you need to learn. You know, yes, to get stronger, but you don't have to lift these crazy weights. Just move a challenging weight that's for you to give you the stimulus that you need for whatever workout it is. And then you're going to be able to move at 90 years old. You know, I don't want to be 90 years old in a wheelchair and in a cane and have a life alert button around my neck because I fell and now I need this thing to like hit, you know? So I just want to be able to move for the rest of my life, travel down the road at 90 still with Allison, you know, hopefully we are together and travel and move, you know? So I think, I don't know. I just think that that should be everybody's end goal is, you know, you got to realize, and you need to do it early. Like, you don't need to wait till like you're 45, 50. Cause that to me, that's, that's late. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to end up breaking yourself. Yeah. And something that you said there that definitely resonates with me is that it's okay for those goals to change over time, even in small windows of maybe this year of my life, things align outside of the gym, inside of the gym, where I can really dedicate some time, energy, and effort and see where I can push my own potential, wherever that takes me, great. But then there's other times of our life currently, you know, you have a baby on the way where time and other factors play a mm -hmm. role where now you might not have two to three hours to spend working on your fitness at the gym. And that's okay. We have new goals, new things we can work towards. And for you, the idea of moving well and moving pain-free those are two great goals that allow you to still stay healthy, still stay fit, and still work with all the things going on outside of your life. And I think that's a lesson a lot of us can take because um, we sometimes can get stuck in this idea of more is better. And mm -hmm. uh, when we start running down that rabbit hole, sometimes it can be challenging to keep up with it. Right. And so I'm curious, uh, as an owner too, is there a way that you communicate that or work on some of that, whether it's a, a mental perspective or mental shift with the members at your gym? Because I'm sure you have a wide range of athletes, just like we do. Everyone who it's their first time ever stepping into a gym to I'm seven, eight years in, I want to see how far I can push this thing and see where I can go. Um, how do you, as an owner, as a coach, help people on their own personal paths and fitness journeys? Um, like you said, we have, we have a, a, a wide range of people. We have, um, you know, we have some 15 year olds, a few 20 in their twenties, you know, and then all, most of our, our people here are, you know, 30, 35 plus, um, and we, we got some, you know, some very fit people. Um, but I try to, I really, I, the story that I just told you, it, I actually now talk about all the time. Mm. And I'm just like, and everybody always says, yeah, but you're so young. And I'm like, but yeah, I, I understand that. But I'm not, I don't need to be doing that, you know, lifting as much as I used to right now yeah and like you said it's the it's the timing of my life um but like somebody asked me that and he's you know i think he's close to 40 like 40 45 and 
you know, I remember when he first walked in, he wanted, he wanted to start, he just want, he wanted to lift some like crazy weights. All right, we can get you stronger. That's, that's the thing. We'll, we'll get you stronger, but why are you so concerned about hitting these weights? You know, um, is it cool? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. Um, like I saw this uh, video of a 89 year old dude that was back squatting 225 and then deadlifting 405 that's cool yeah um and he went viral the guy went viral but it's cool and all but is that realistic i mean no um but i'll i try to explain to people here too with like movements like as simple as the burpee and somebody asked me, it was the first time that anybody's asked me, it was like, what's the purpose of a burpee? Right. Mm-hmm. And then we had, it was a, it was, it was a, there was a lot of people in class and he, and they, and she asked me, what was the purpose? What's the purpose of a burpee? Cause she didn't like burpees. Mm-hmm. She's like, why are we doing burpees? And I guess to her, it just seemed like a stupid movement, like get your body to the floor and back up. Right. And I was like, A, it's one of the best movements you can do, and you can do it anywhere. It's a full body movement, right? But I I always try to put everything into a live perspective of the same thing that I, I brought up just you know a minute ago of if you fall, you'll remember all those burpees that you did in class. But if you didn't do CrossFit or whatever you're doing for whatever fitness that you're doing and you're not doing burpees in your programming, then you got a problem because you're going to fall at some point when you're 80, 90 years old and you're going to need to be able to get back up. Mm -hmm. So I always try to relate everything to life, Um, whether it's even something as like a pull up. I was like, what if you're hanging on something and you need to be able to get back up on whatever ledge that you are because you're hanging and below you can't you know is is death i put stuff into i put death into it all the time and they're like wow it makes sense i need to be able to pull myself up to get back on the ledge or i'm gonna fall and not survive so i try to use stuff like that to people here and and when it comes up everybody's like oh it kind of makes a lot of sense Mm -hmm. i don't want to be 80 years old and on the ground and have to hit a life alert button you know so I think the, the way that you've, you know, connected movement to stories and then also tying it into potential life experiences, mm-hmm. that's a way that a lot of people connect with each other is through this idea of stories and finding the meaning behind different movements. So even something as simple as getting down and off the ground a bunch of times in a very, you know, finite amount of time. Right. Well, there's there's some utility to that. And yes, maybe not every movement we're going to find ourselves in that specific no. position, but we're still challenging the body in different ways to work on those different characteristics that CrossFit defines as fitness, which is always fun to for people to have the challenge and never feel like you've arrived. There's always something to improve or work on within the parameters that you're interested in doing that. So I, I love that idea of helping members understand and connect to the why uh, through stories that keeps them motivated or keeps them on track, regardless of what the goals are. So, well, we've talked about uh, a lot of topics today. I've loved hearing a little bit more about your own fitness journey from sport through college, the idea of working on different goals at different stages of your life, whether it's competing, getting into general health and fitness, whether it's, hey, baby on the way, things change. And then how do you relay that to your members? Building community, owning your own gym. Uh, It's been fun to hear your health and fitness journey. And then also hear a little bit of the mindset that allowed you to make some really big and tough decisions, have confidence in that, and then also help others along their health and fitness journey. So Daniel, I want to say thanks so much for spending some time with me today. Uh, I'm excited to continue to get to know and learn from you as someone in the area here. And uh, thank you so much for your time today. 
Hey, I, I enjoyed it. Thanks for uh, having me on. I thought it was, I was excited when you asked me. Um, so yeah, um, I appreciate it. It was fun for sure. Um, yeah. And uh, last thing here, Daniel, if anyone's interested in finding out a little bit more about you or your gym, what are the best places for people to find you? Um, our, our website is always pretty much up to date. Um, firstinflightathletics.com, you know, our social media, we try to post as much as we possibly can. So Instagram and Facebook, you know, there's always something up there. Um, and then, you know, in the bios, it has, you know, numbers or, you know, you know, if you need to contact me by phone, that kind of stuff. But yeah. Awesome. Well, go ahead, give Daniel and First in Flight a follow. They run a great gym up there. So can't recommend them enough if you're in the area and looking for a place to improve or enhance your health and fitness. So that being said, thanks for listening to another episode of At The Bar. We look forward to continuing these conversations and bringing them your way.